when starting this challenge you want to take a inside line here this will give you the best opportunity to overtake the first car quickly Ideally, you're looking to be past the third place car by the time you get to the tunnel. Overtaking the second place car can be quite difficult depending on where you are on the lap. Uh, but just, just avoid contact, you'll be fine. Uh, and you'll definitely have the speed to uh, overtake the first place car up to the line. For the Sakuba challenge, I chose the Focus Rally car. Uh, I use the Sport hard tyres, as you, as you can see there, because it reduces the P overall PP of the car by about 40 points. In order to get it down to sub 600, I purchased the ballast and the power restrictor, and I just messed with the power restrictor settings and slowly reduced them down until I got to minus 600. When you start the challenge, the first thing you want to do is change the fuel map to around 4 or 5. As you can see, I've got it on 4 at the moment. The reason for this is it reduces fuel consumption and will therefore increase the amount of time you can spend on track without pitting, as the plan for this is to only pit once. Around lap 3, the weather should start to change. As you can see here, it's now extremely dark compared to the first lap, and then it should start raining. On this attempt, it didn't actually rain too badly for me, uh, but on previous attempts, as I'm going to show in a minute, it actually rained quite heavy. As you can see from my first attempt, as I've come around turn one, the heavens just open, so it seems to be that there are some variances in how much it will actually rain when you do this challenge. As we're about to start lap 10, you can see that cars in front of us have started to pit for their first pit stop. We've got roughly 9.5 laps left of fuel, but we are going to pit a little bit earlier because the tyre condition is starting to get quite bad. What I have started to do by this point in the race, because we are catching the front runners, is I have reduced the fuel map down to 2. It will mean that we burn a little bit more fuel so we can get less laps, but it doesn't actually matter because we end up boxing around lap 15 or 16 anyway for new tyres. So we're now on lap 16 and I'm coming in for my first pit stop. We're going to change our tyres and we're going to fully refuel the car. Now that we've finished our first pit stop, we've come out in P4 and we are around 35, 36 seconds to the leaders. We do end up reducing the gap by around five seconds, but again, this doesn't matter because as you can see, the front runners are now coming in for their final pit stop and we're just gonna breeze past them. From this point, just alter your fuel map to make sure that you have enough laps remaining for the amount of racing laps that you actually have. As you can see, we're now on lap 30, approaching the finish line with around one lap left of fuel and we've built a healthy gap of around 25 seconds because we only stopped once.
for the acceleration battle, similar to the first one, just choose the fastest car you have. I chose the Super Formula car, and you should have no problems completing it. For the cone challenge, what I did at the start was I pointed my wheels to the right to get a greater angle to be able to turn left, and then used the handbrake quite a lot just to provoke that drift. For the drift challenge, I found that it was easier to aim your car towards the left-hand side of the track. For the first sector, you aim for around 2,500 points. And for the second sector, this is a longer, more difficult section. You're just looking to stick to the inside again and try and control it as best you can. The next challenge when it comes to managing your fuel, I found that keeping your fuel map at 1 for the first straight and the back straight was the most productive use of fuel. After the first corner, you're going to change it to fuel mode 3 or 4. As you're approaching the back straight, you're going to change your fuel map to 1. Approaching the final corner, you want roughly around 10% left of fuel. This way, you're able to use the accelerator all the way up until the line. You might find yourself having difficulty with uh, the car in front losing stability like I did here. So when it happens, just reset to the main menu and start again. Now, when it comes to completing this, on the first corner, you're gonna stick really close to that bollard and you're gonna go around the outside of these two cars so you can carry the speed. On the exit of that corner, you're looking to be less than a second to the two cars in front. Avoid any contact because you will fail, almost like I did here. You're looking to go over the apex there. I misjudged it, I went slightly wide. And here you're looking to go over the curb and over this one as well. Getting a good exit out of this corner is vital to set yourself up for the overtake on the final straight.
you're looking to overtake the first car by the time you get to the hard right hander coming up. And then you're looking to overtake the third place car by the time or just after you get to the hairpin. Coming down this straight you should make up roughly around 6 seconds on the two cars in front by the time you've got to 130R. Go for the overtake into the chicane on the second place car and by the time you've got round them it's just a straight drag race to the end against a very slow first place car. For earning all bronze in your Moby Dick challenges, you will receive a Toyota 86 Group 4 car. And for earning all gold in the Moby Dick challenges, you will receive a Mac 40.